Welcome back, everyone, to Halloween Haunts 365.com, the podcast. I'm Jared. Hi, I'm Terry. Today we have a fun interview, but we're going to check out the store real quick and then we'll get to it. All right, today we have the team from The Haunting of Lincoln Mill, a brand new haunted attraction coming to Philadelphia. How are you guys doing? Good, Jared. How about yourself? Pretty good, pretty good. Very interested in talking to you guys. <laughs> yeah, we're we're just interested to talk uh, to other people, too, about what we've been doing. It's been a wild ride so far. I'm, I'm sure. sure. Very sure. Yeah, yeah we're excited. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you guys are excited and very tired. <laughs> you bet. Jared uh, Jared probably still has the black uh, paint under his nails from all the distressing this past week. Yep, what did I say? <laughs> Always. All the distressing on the walls. Always. <laughs> so w- where did the idea for the haunt begin? Let's start there. Cool. Um, so Jared and I uh, have known each other now. Oh, my God. 12 years something like that 12 14 years um we actually went to college together and we used to run a haunted house every year at at, uh, philadelphia university which is now jefferson university here in philadelphia Uh, we would rent out an old 1800s mansion on campus and the school somehow let us do this and we ran hundreds of kids through it every year worked with like safety and security on campus and uh we would donate all the money we would make for our fraternity uh, at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia every year. And uh, Jared and I used to, you know, joke and said, yeah, this would be amazing to do uh, on a grand scale someday. Well, fast forward, you know, 10 years later, you know, we've all gone off in our prospective careers. Jared's a licensed architect. Um, I do real estate development. Uh, I had purchased a building here in Maniunk, uh in Philadelphia. It's, it's a little, it's in, in Philadelphia, but it's on the northwest side of it. Um, and uh, we had a massive flood um, of, on this building. On the whole first floor, uh, it was Hurricane Ida that flooded out Philadelphia. Yep. And there was yep. like people kayaking down 676. <laughs> we saw it on TV. People people were going wild. and uh, But our building was completely destroyed. Um, and you could imagine that trying to find a tenant for that first floor <laughs> space uh, was keeping me up at night. And I was thinking about it when I'd wake up in the morning. And uh, it kind of clicked. I was like, you know what? this would be the perfect space to do a haunted house. It's 9,000 square feet. I said, you know, Jared and I would stay connected, but we weren't as close as we are today. And now we're, that we're in business together, but I reached out to him. Uh, I said, Jared, I, I want to show you something while you come down to Philly, let's talk, you know, and I, I started walking him through the building that I've been renovating on the upper floors with all the offices and everything. And I said, what are your thoughts on running a haunted house here? And I could kind of see it in his eyes that, you know, he's like, no way you're kidding. And I said, well, no, I'm, I'm serious. Like, I think this is it. And if we're going to do it, we got to be all in. And, and that was kind of the start to it. Very cool. And yeah. um, I was pretty well aware of the flood. I saw all the photos on Facebook kind of, kind of circulating. And my first thought was like, this is, this is crazy. I mean, if this place floods this bad uh, at some point in the future, it's going to flood again. Uh, one of the first things I did was look at the Philly flood map specifically for that area and pretty much assess the flood um, history over the past like 200 years. And uh, this flood was like the worst one since like 1860, I believe. Wow. Wow. And uh, so, yeah, I think like it was like, it was like right around there. And um, just going through the entire chart, I'm like, uh, probability. I think we probably have a good seven to 10 years until another one comes along. Um, but at first I was like, I was like, hell no, that's, that's, that's crazy to hold in a place that, that floods and is in the flood plane. Yep. But, uh, after kind of analyzing it more and kind of digging into it, um, we decided to move forward with it and, um, had it a pretty, 
important part in our story. I mean, one of our greatest fears yeah. for starting a business in a floodplain, uh, why not take one of our greatest fears with the flood and uh, use it to our advantage? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, yep. Very cool. So that kind of answers my next question is, when did you get the idea for the location and the backstory of the haunt? And that explained it all. <laughs> well, Jared, I think, you know, the, the, the one thing about Jared, you know, we, we're kind of the yin and the yang to each other. Jared, uh, I've been referring to him as my Halloween psychopath. I, you know, I'm passionate about it, too. But Jared is the guy, the only guy I know that November 1st, he's trying to figure out what's happening on October 31st. Um, and that's just his passion. And that's that's why this is a great relationship, because on the business side of it, right, I bring the business know-how, the insurance, the, the permitting, right, making sure that we're, we got our dots, you know, our I's dot and our T's crossed on that front. But Jared has passion and, you know, his storyline for what he's creating here is second to none. I mean, it. I, I've never seen it in this industry, what he's doing and what he's beginning to build here. And I'm just happy to be a part of it and support him on, on my side uh, from growing many businesses uh, to date. So, Very cool. I can't wait yeah. to say it. I know. Me too. <laughs> I'm excited. Well, have you guys built or worked at another pro haunt or just the college? So we ran we ran our charity haunt in college for about six six to seven years. Oh wow! Okay. Uh, Brian and I went went back after we both graduated and kept the fraternity rolling with it. And then after that, I had rolled into home haunting for quite a few years. Uh, I live in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and um, fortunately, I will not be doing that anymore. But <laughs> tracked, I mean, just. Just run for, for, one, for one weekend, the last weekend in October, I tracked a little over a little over a thousand people the past past few years, uh, and I do live in a residential neighborhood. I'm not out in the countryside at all. So uh, as I was starting to get the word out and seeing some of the Facebook posts go viral, I was getting pretty concerned for the sake of my neighbors and um, all the people that could potentially show up. So I've been kind of scaling that up uh, with my the home haunt I ran the past few years. I would have about 20, about 25 actors or so. Um, so my experience before going pro kind of ends there at the home haunt level. But of course, going pro, we knew that we needed to step it up big time <laughs> with the crowds that we'll be attracting at our location yeah. and in Philly. And um, and what, one of the things I, I can say, right, so to answer your question, we've never had experience other than going to them, right? You know, our, our, my closest experience was what I experienced at Transworld was going behind the scenes at Hell's Gate and seeing all the cool stuff that they were doing and going to Disturbia and, and the darkness and right and seeing what was what was possible. Right. Um, where I think, you know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a businessman. Right. What I do is invest in jockeys and invest in businesses. And what I know that Jared is doing different than anybody else that out there that I can see or have found yet is how detailed he's going in with the storyline. One of the biggest disconnects that I found walking through all these haunted houses in St. Louis and Chicago was that they were all disconnected. One moment I'm in an Aztec room, the next moment I'm in a 3D clown room, the next moment I'm in uh, you know some creepy room. Like there was no there was no synergy between all the different rooms that I would walk through. And not only that, there was no deep deep story that got me there and tied it all together for me. Yeah. And I think that's the one thing that you'll notice when you go through our haunt this year, from the moment you get in there and you start in the lab, you're, you're in this ever cycle of, of the story that doesn't change. And it's the same characters. You're, you're in this area, you're in the, where they used to turn people to puppets, right? Like it, it's a non-stop <laughs> story that just continues throughout. And I think that's very unique to our industry and it sure as hell very unique to our area that we're doing this in. Yeah, because I'll tell you from just diving through the millions of websites that I have to to get the schedule going is the backstory's pretty much died. Yeah, it's it's not really happening in a lot of haunts anymore. Mm -mm. Yep, and 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 it's what's been really cool is you know we started our our pr promotional content about a week ago now getting our Facebook. I mean, we went from you know forty followers on Instagram, which is friends and family, we're almost at nine hundred in a week later. Um, you know people are like, is this real? Like our, currently our ad account is under review by Facebook because people are actually thinking that this flood exposed the chamber and they found bodies at this building in Manion. Oh my God. Right? Oh like, my God. So the story, 
the story is like hooking people to the nth degree, right? So we want them to think about that old mill owner. We want them to experience that, you know, darkness underneath a basement level. They're going to be thinking about that from our promotional content that's going out now to when they're on site that uh, that night. So I think like with the hook with that, like everyone knows that Hurricane Ida hit. Everyone knows uh, that Maniunk was underwater. So to kind of put a little twist out there with a little bit of folklore, um, you should see the comments on some of our Facebook posts. I mean, people are going back and forth contemplating whether it's real or not yeah uh the other day i saw someone was like i don't think it's real otherwise you probably would have heard about it on the news <laughs> um yeah. so it's just it's just funny kind of seeing those comments circulate yeah. and people kind of have some back back and forth with, with one another yeah. if whether yeah. it's real or not and i'm still getting questions all the time just through my my personal network uh did, did this really happen i'm like well of course <laughs> <laughs> it happened uh, right. constantly it's it's Constantly a question that keeps coming up that we think is funny. That is cool. That is cool. It means you got a good story, which is. We hope so. Which is hard to do these days. I hope so. Yeah. And one thing that, I mean, we're also trying to do, I know every, every haunted attraction ha has characters, um, but it's kind of communicating those characters backstory, backstories ahead of time via social media. And we, we have plans down the road for comic books, uh, short short movies but really kind of digging into each character's backstory uh, ahead of time so when um the guests arrive on site and go through the attraction they see oh that's that's victor kane that's that's edwin leach the night watchman um so you really know all the characters before you go in there uh it's kind of like a great uh disney ride yeah um or, or or universal you go through there and like you see the characters it kind of gives you that sentimental value so every single character in our story has a name and will be communicated uh, ahead of time. Um, there are some several se secret characters that we won't, we won't mention now that will be uh, quite a bit of a surprise, but they all fit into this cohesive story, which ties into the textile mill, like 1930, 1940 history uh, in Maniac at the time. That's so cool. It is. When do you guys open? Sure. Um, so opening night is October 6th this year. Um, you know, year one, we're not trying to wear out our actors and actresses. Uh, you know, it's, it's a, you're right. We've never run a professional haunt. So we're only doing 15 nights this year. Um, we're going to be doing every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, starting October 6th into the first weekend in November. So it's only three nights a week. Um, and then on Saturdays, we're going to be doing a daytime event of 12 to 4. That's no scare actors, but lights off, you know, music, smells, everything, all the animatronics still working, but people can walk through not worrying that someone's going to come around the corner and make them fall on the ground, you know? <laughs> That's um, cool. So, yeah, so we're excited. And, you know, 15 nights year one, but next year, you know, we have bigger yeah, ambitions. Wow. Well. Let's see. Well, we would ever want to make your haunt unique, and that's the ever-playing story, which would be pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. We, we encourage it to flood again. <laughs> Answer the story, right? It's the best marketing ah, we can do. At least not for another two to three years, yeah. please. I, I need it to wait till October, uh, <laughs> November 6th. It can start flooding again. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. So what's the one thing from this crazy offseason I'm sure you guys have had that you could pride yourself on in the first offseason? Cool. So I will tell you, Jared and I are doing the unthinkable. We are building a haunted house in six months. First time ever. <laughs> Using techniques that no one else even considered. I'll give, you, I'll give you one example. Jared put together the whole lumber order list. You know, we have 9,000 square feet. Jared comes to me, he goes, Brian, we need to make 210 wall panels, a combination of four by eight and two by eights. It's going to take us a month and a half, you and I, to do them together. So what do I do? Uh, here's the business guy in me. I call up some old contacts at Toll Brothers who's a national home builder. I call up the guy that runs the TIS plant in Morrisville, New Jersey, Brian Hunter. I said, hey, Brian, I know we haven't talked in eight years, but I'm building a house. Can you do some panels for me? He goes, oh, nice. So a house, what do you build? Yeah, we do some third party. I said, it's a spooky house. So we had Toll Brothers fabricate all the wall panels for us and drop them on site, which saved us a month and a half. Yep. Right? So it's we're getting creative and strategic and things like that. But I, I would say that's probably been our biggest challenge is we didn't get to start building till June. 
Yeah, it's challenging. Yeah. Very and stressful. To, yeah. And to, to add to that, so we, we started talking about this in, in December. Uh, we wanted to make sure that our process was as efficient as, as possible once we started out the build in June. Uh, so since December, um, I've been working on a virtual computer model. So as, as an architect, um, all the buildings that we do, we first do as a virtual computer model. So back in December, I was digging, digging deep, doing, doing multiple uh, iterations, constantly tuning it, uh, pretty much figuring out where, where everything's going, the, the whole story, how the layout ties to the story, all of our set scenes, um, things got scrapped, things got moved along, but uh, over, over four months of tuning that virtual model, and when the time came to build uh, mid-June, uh, we were hyper, hyper efficient, uh, went up, went up real fast. We're constantly, I mean, <laughs> we're still, we're still busy nonstop thinking about this nonstop. Um, but the virtual model as well helps really move things along with the schedule that we're working with. We also, um, I'm not sure if any Han owners have ever tried it, but we used an app called TaskRabbit. Um, you know, it's a haunted house. It's not a ton of technical, crazy stuff that goes into it, right? We're not building a house per se we're building you know a temporary house right so we've been able to get some help off of this this app to get painters to get people to help us like those wall panels that showed up on an 18 wheeler we hired a few or a couple guys that came and helped jared and i take them off the truck which took three hours as opposed to a whole eight hour day so we've been strategic in spending our money in the right places to make sure that we get you know we expedite the haunt building so that's very cool yeah, because those wall panels take forever. <laughs> <laughs> Even with a jig, they take forever. Because, I mean, it's yep. probably, what, 15, 20 screws a panel? Ugh. Yep. So what has been the biggest challenge you faced so far? Jared, what's your biggest challenge? The schedule. The fact that we didn't start building in June. Uh, <laughs> when, when Brian first approached me, Last year, I'm like, yeah, we need to start building in like February, March. And at first you're like, ah, April, maybe May, June. So constantly racing the clock. Um, yeah. There's making sure that we are hyper efficient with everything we're doing. So that's, that's been the challenge, making yeah, sure yeah. that we're super productive. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, you know, for me, for my position, right? Like, you know, one of, one of the things as an entrepreneur, I, I can see things very differently than most people. And I knew when I approached this idea with Jared that, you know, I knew it, it, we had all the right factors in place and, you know, it took Jared, you know, Jared knew about it, but you know, what was exciting for me is recently, he's like, we're going to F and do this. Mm. Like, this is real. This is going to happen. Like it's here. Like we're selling tickets already. We're, we, we're, we have all the wall panels up. We have almost this whole thing painted. We have all of our props almost here that we got from Transworld this year, right? Like we're there. We got our queue lines figured out. We got event security. We got our crazy preposterous insurance bill paid, right? Like <laughs> all the factors are already done. Nine, he just told me before it's called 95% of our haunt is already fire sprayed. Like we have a, you know, we had all the, the right factors working for us. And also, you know, I think our location this year, you know, we are going to be the scariest haunt in Philadelphia, hands down. There's, that's not even a question. And I, and I think that's, that's also going to go well for us too. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. Me too. I, we walked uh, we walked somebody through it. Uh, it Friday night, Jared, a friend of a friend that was helping us build this, and uh, he was screaming, like, screaming, and it was just Jared and I hopping from space to space as he walked through it in 15 minutes. <laughs> How's the uh, actor hiring going? Have you started that yet, or we have, Jared? Why don't you touch on that? Sure. Yeah, it's go. It's going very well. Uh, we weren't sure how well we do the first year in terms of attracting people. Um, I think we're up to about a little over eighty applicants right now. Oh, that's awesome! Um, so yeah. we had our our first in person audition this past Saturday. Uh, had quite a few come out to that. We had them pick uh, time slots. Uh, our next in person audition is this upcoming Saturday. So we're definitely uh, busy busy with that, um, building out our our team. So luckily we're, we're in, we're in Philadelphia. We think we've got a lot of great applicants so far. Yeah. That's the, the, awesome. one, the one thing, you know, that that's working into our advantage is we are a new haunt, right? I, you know, I'm not sure the last professional haunt to open our area, but a lot of people that are coming to us and auditioning, obviously they've worked in past places. 
but they want a spot where the culture can be created from scratch, right? Where people can get an opportunity to get in at the ground floor. Maybe someone that wasn't a team lead at another attraction now has an opportunity to step above people that have been there for 15 years prior to them, right? So we have a lot of those positive factors working in our favor uh, from a hiring and culture standpoint. Like we want to build the best culture and we only want to hire the best actors, event staff and makeup artists possible in our city. And that's we're we're paying accordingly. And we're also we we know we're going to build a team of people that like working with Jared. And I. So that's that's where I think we have a little competitive advantage, too. That's very good. Yeah. So how's I know if people think Philly, they think parking. How's your parking situation? Great question. So fortunately uh, for us, you know, in Maniunk, you know, we're, we're on a commercial corridor, right? So um, we have lots of parking lots flanking the site. We have uh, hundreds of spaces, luckily. Uh, fortunately for us this year, uh, the Maniunk Development Corporation, which pretty much handles that whole strip and works with all the businesses, they are basing their entire Halloween and fall scheduling around our haunted house. Oh, wow. So they're also going to be running a trolley every night of the haunt. Uh, you know, it starts at the two major parking lots that flank our thing and goes all the way down the main street, stops at businesses that are sponsoring the trolley, and then start uh, stops at our haunt, obviously, to pick people up and drop people off. Um, you know, obviously, uh, with our location, too, Uber's a real thing. So, you know, we expect a lot of people will be arriving by Lyft and Uber. Uh, but for the parking situation, and also since we're time ticketing, um, we think we're going to be okay on that front. That's good. Yeah. Because yeah. I know... And we have... Oh, go ahead. Don't go for it. It's your show. Uh, so we also have everything, everything, and we'll send you some pictures too that you can share. But all of our you know, queue lines and everything are on site. We have a there's a big parking lot behind the building on our site that we're using for all the outdoor vendors, food trucks, beer vendors, a uh, queue line. We're going to have like a big projection screen that's going to be doing you know a pre-show, a uh, bunch of actors and actresses out there running around having fun, and then. Um, you know, we're also, we're very unique too. We're actually on the water. So, you know, the haunt kind of, you know, you see the Schuylkill River by us, which is really cool. Yeah. So you do see the river. It's pretty different. Mm-hmm. You excited? I am. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be scared. I promise you. I, I, I was in there the other night. Jared's like, oh, I'm going to go take a dinner break. And I was in there. He's like, just get a couple things done. And I'm walking around it with the lights on, getting wigged out. I'm like, this is, this is, I, I don't want to be here by myself. And you, <laughs> and you probably called me about four times. I did. Of, it's not a lie. I wish like an hour. Uh, I when are you getting down here? When are you getting yeah. down here? I got, I got my tool pellet on and I'm doing cross bracing on all the wall panels. I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to be here by myself. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll give you each $10 if you get me. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. That challenge. Yeah. It's a fun challenge. It's only happened like twice in seven years. Good. Good. So I'll accept it. It'll be fun. So you guys obviously went the trans world, which is amazing. What stuck out to you guys this year? Like what was the big thing everyone was staring at and the one thing you really wanted? Maybe you got it, maybe did it. You don't have to answer that. <laughs> Are you talking product wise or uh, like we'll anything? say prop product animatronic cool. wise? Yeah. Good, Jared. I'm gonna I'm just gonna jump in. So we did, this is the first year that we did the bus tour before, beforehand, uh, the few days prior. Um, seeing Hell's Gate behind the scenes with, with, the, with the lights on, uh, that was definitely a highlight of, of the trip for me. Um, in terms of the Tram World show, show itself, uh, there's quite a few new vendors that we really, uh, really liked uh, and got a lot of props, props from. Um, it's such a great, such a great show. I, I would I, say, uh, oh, good. Yeah. No, go for it. Oh, I, I was going to just say I, my favorite. So obviously I, I uh, second what Jared said about the bus tour prior. Uh, that was, we just met a lot of great other haunt owners and learned so much from them. Just asking questions. You know, we told them what we were up to there. Everyone's looking at us like these kids are crazy, <laughs> but you know, just <laughs> so we get to meet everybody on the bus. Cause you're, you're on there for eight hours together. And then plus you get to see all these amazing haunts along the way. Um, and then product wise, my, uh, my favorite one that I, that we purchased, um, we met this gentleman, uh, what's Scott's last name, Jared, Scott from Arkansas. Uh, Scott, he runs, Scott Zaney, I think. yeah, he runs, uh, Hauntiques. 
Uh, so, so he was selling this autopsy table down there and we ended up buying it. And not only that, we got him to put a bunch of other stuff for us together. He drove up from Arkansas and met us, but yeah, he's a, he's a great guy who we met. And alongside that, we also met the gentleman from Strega Moon Productions that do the, uh, the John Doe body with the open chest and everything. Yeah. So we got the autopsy table with the John Doe that's going on it. Uh, so that was my favorite prop because I, I I thought it was a real body there. You know, you know me like Jared's in the hall. I, I was walking around. I go, this thing is real. Like this, people are not going to like this. This thing is real. <laughs> Doesn't get any more real than that. So that was probably my favorite prop we purchased. But we got a bunch of animatronics from all the all the uh, you know infamous guys and gals down there. And uh, yeah, we we kept swiping the credit card like crazy. But that yeah, we're loaded up. <laughs> we're loaded up. I'm afraid to go back next year for successful here. I'm and worried. I, I keep <laughs> saying that, like, we need more of those. Like, yeah, I think, more... I think if we did like a West Coast Trans World, a Central Trans World, and an East Coast Trans World, I, the vendors know, will just, make out. I'm just surprised we don't have an East Coast one. Do it in Atlantic City or something, right? Like, we have so many haunts up in the East Coast. We should, we should look at doing something, uh, and we can interrelate it all. You know, it could be Trans World East, Central West. Like, I yeah. feel like that would be amazing. Because other than Trans World and Hong Kong, the or Hong Kong, I'm talking weird. Yep, that's the major two, and you only get those twice a year. So mm-hmm. I mean, I always thought there was a place for it here between Ohio and Pennsylvania. There's 300 yep. haunts. Yeah, Pittsburgh would be a good location too. I feel like. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Between that, between Pittsburgh and here, there's and you go down, there's probably more than half the other side of the country. Yeah, so I I think it would work. It's just something I've been looking at. Yeah. So you guys have food trucks? I'm excited about some food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we haven't locked in the food trucks. That's honestly the easiest part. It's yeah. more like what do we want on site? Like what type of food we get? You know, Philadelphia. That's that's easy. Um, but what we are doing, which is nice, uh, we're working with the other local businesses there, and um, you know, promoting them as well. Because what's nice about Maniunk is, you know, we have the whole strip of bars and restaurants. So you can make a night out of this, right? It's not like you're, right. you're coming there and you have to drive them 30 minutes to find a bar. No, you can come there, do dinner first with your friends or family, you know, come stand in line for 30 minutes, 45 minutes and, and get in with your time ticket, right? Or, you know, if you want some more flexibility, you buy a VIP ticket, come anytime, any night. And if you really love us, you buy the platinum VIP for a hundred bucks. And you get 50% off our next event that we're going to be running in, in February and in, uh, in our halfway to Han Friday the 13th event. And you get a free t-shirt with that too and skip the line. And you get to come any day, anytime, it's good which deal. is different. Yep. So you guys so are trying... on board for the off-season events? Yeah, we're definitely going to continue through that. Jared, do you want to mention a couple of those or what you're, what you're going to be doing? Sure. Yeah, after we get the first first October season out of, out of our way <laughs> and in November, we're going to jump right into a Valentine's Day haunt uh, for Valentine's Day weekend. Um, definitely going to skip Christmas this year. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Um, and then halfway to Halloween will be our, our next one. But yep. uh, we've, we've, we've got some other ideas uh, with, with escape rooms that will build on to this, build on from our story about the hidden chamber. But uh, that'll that'll be coming down down the road quite a bit. Yep. Yeah, very nice. cool. You guys gonna throw axe throwing up like everyone else has been doing? Or <laughs> no? <laughs> nah, we, we don't got time for that. No, I hear you. Yeah, not this year. I'm sure that's a whole other insurance payment that you got to deal with. Yeah. Do you have flying axes on site? <laughs> Check <that box> <laughs> <laughs> it was just like I don't know, three or four years ago. Boom. Haunted house, extra. I go like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think you know, with us, right? We're we're a little restricted in our space. You know, we we're on a main corridor. You know, our whole lot's got to be dedicated to the actual hall and the queue lines and some of the vendors and the porta potties, right? We, you know, it's it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a challenge to get anything else in there this year, at least. Oh man, Brian, not even on that brand new nice deck. <laughs> no, not on the deck. <laughs> That's where you're gonna be chasing people. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. This, I'm excited. I hate doing interviews this close to haunt season because it just amps me up even further. I start <laughs> losing sleep over excitement. So this might go more towards Jared, but uh, haunting usually starts from horror movie love. Do you guys have a favorite horror movie? I do. Uh, I think it came out in two, 2011, uh, Insidious. 
uh, Insidious just really hit, hit a nerve with me. I just thought it was such a neat idea with astral projection. And still to this day, that's, that's my favorite. Yep. And if you remember during that time, horror kind of slowed down. Like it was a lot of Japanese remakes that really weren't catching on. And then Insidious hit the haunted house movie was back, but it was deeper than that. So, yeah. yeah, Insidious, really, I love that movie. I remember before that came out, I know, uh, like, the par- like Paranormal Activity, that yep. that came out, and then Insidious came out after that. I think the reviewers call Insidious uh, Paranormal Activity on crack or something like that. Yeah. And when I, <laughs> when I, when I saw that, I, I saw, saw that in theaters, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is such, such a great idea, Execu- executed so well. Um, I mean, there's there has been a lot of modern horror movies, but just just something with that one really, really stuck out. It was very original. Yeah, I the, thought that and the original Conjuring, I can always watch, just because they were so well done. And I I guess I love haunted houses because I go to these things. I love the haunted house movie. It's my favorite kind. I guess it all started with Poltergeist. <laughs> yeah. I would I would say uh, I had a I had a roommate in college that. Uh, Used to watch the Rocky Horror Picture Show a lot, which, okay. uh, which is fun. But uh, I would say I, I did like the Saw series. I got into that a little bit. That's um, been coming up as, a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, um, <laughs> yeah, you're talking to a guy that was getting a little wheezy being in there by himself, right? So, <laughs> you know, haunt is not my thing. But I, when I'm behind the haunt, right? When I'm chasing people with a chainsaw during college out at a, you know, the old uh, mansion that we used to run it at, you know, that was a lot of fun, and I got real into it. Um, basically chase kids across the college campus with a chainsaw. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. So Stand outside the uh, cafeteria with a chainsaw. Yeah, that's fun. Huh. Where did the uh, the logo come from? Because that guy reminds me a lot from Poltergeist too, and I I love that movie. So I kind of really like the dude on your logo. Yeah. So co- couple things on the logo. I know you said the haunting of Lincoln Mill. We we slightly altered it to just Lincoln Mill haunted. Okay. Right, just for this year. But um, the gentleman that created the logo actually works uh, for my other business uh, as a graphic designer and, and animator. Uh, he does a lot of rendering visualization work, and he's also a super talented designer. And then be- go backwards, his name's Kevin, and he used to actually create our promo content back in the fraternity for our old haunted house stuff. I wish we had some of that, Jerry. We can, uh, you probably can pull it up, I know, but it's <laughs> yeah. cool. They were cool. And so we, we thought nobody else to go to other than him to make some uh, fun logos for us. But yeah, he's uh, he's been a tremendous help getting some of the graphic stuff going. Very cool. Very cool. Hmm. So we got all season events. We got food. This is looking like a fun night out. And he said beer. And beer. Yeah. <laughs> beer beer will just, be on site. Yeah. And just to add to that, we, we are working out having some branded items. We have a very, feel like we have a very strong story and some characters. So uh, we're working on having some beverages and food branded to some of our characters. That's cool. Do we have mugs coming? Mugs. There might, there's, definitely gonna be, there's definitely going to be drink cups that they're going to be serving out of, for sure. Very cool. But, and and it, the thing to keep in mind, too, look, this is a year one haunt for yep. us, right? Right. You know, we, uh, we had the privilege. Uh, so, so the gentleman named Randall, uh, who's the state inspector for the Department of Agriculture for Amusements, uh, we had him out on Friday, you know, because I and Jared, you know, obviously didn't want him there yet because we're nowhere close to being ready to inspect our haunt for compliance. But I wanted him out to help us. And, you know, I was just asking him, like, you know, Randall, like, what do you think? He's like, Ryan, most of these guys take 10 years to get going. Most of these haunts I'm going to are like home haunts trying to become professional levels. You guys are doing it in less than a year, going from zero to 100, you know, spending six figures to get this thing to a point where, a year one haunt, you know, we're hoping to exceed expectations for people in this industry that know what a year one haunt should be. Yeah. So that's, that's what we're shooting for. Very cool. Mm. Yep. Jared, do you have a favorite horror villain? Favorite horror villain. Hmm. Not off the top of my head. I'm sure, I'm sure it'll come to me in a few few minutes here <laughs> uh i i mean just going going back to insidious the lipstick lipstick face demon uh jumps out uh, i mean jack jack torrance from the shining different different type of villain different type of psychological 
uh, effect there. But um, actually, in The Shining, I guess it's more so the the hotel, uh, di different different type of villain there. But uh, those are probably the first two that come to mind. <laughs> so while you're writing these scripts and characters in this haunt, where are you pulling your inspiration from? Is it stuff you've seen or stuff like you kind of always wanted to do or stuff like that? Yeah, Jared, where's that coming from? Because I've been wondering the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So we, we needed an iconic character. Uh, so in our case, it's, it's Victor Kane. Um, this was an old, old textile mill from the 1930s. So what none other than the mill owner that built the hidden chamber is acting as the main character in this story. And his accomplices are the individuals that were kind of his tight knit uh, sidekicks, his employees. Um, but where that main character came from, um, honestly, I'll be the, the dense schoolhouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. I was pretty inspired by their, their janitor character there. Yeah. Uh, that, that was neat. Uh, down in Universal, the Hall Halloween Horror Nights. I mean, they do they do all movies, but uh, J Jack Torrance in in The Shining House. Um, at my at my home haunt, I had a, a signature character. His name was Uncle Edsel, this uh, creepy old uncle that lived out back in the garage. But uh, for for years, I wanted to have just a strong a strong lead character um that had a backstory kind, kind of went through struggles early on in life kind of went through a transformation um so i've honestly i i pull from a bunch of different sources from certain certain disney movies um past horror movies but in terms of the haunt industry i will admit um the, the janitor at then schoolhouse inspired me a bit i will tell you i've never seen jared happier than when we got that custom mask at transworld <laughs> when we started working with the artists there that make it, what was the name of the company, Jared? Just I knew you'll know. Uh, this was uh, CFX. Yep, CFX. So they did our mask for us, but Jared was so like he, they were showing him on the iPad. He was like, it's like a kid in a candy store, like designing <laughs> his mask. It was, a, it, was, it was the coolest thing that I've seen so far with him. It Very had cool. to be the, the light. Yeah. But yeah, yeah he's like grabbing out. masks. I want this color, this one, the hair, like this one, like bringing it all together. And then, you know, that, that was a lot of fun for me to watch Jared do. Yeah. And uh, I guess digging deeper into Victor's backstory, that's going to come down the road. I mean, there'll be a bunch of pieces kind of uh, overlaid inside the attraction. Um, there's there's one little area called uh, Victor's Psychosis. You kind of get into Victor's childhood memories and you go pretty much get to experience the struggle that he went through as a child. Um, this is pretty much like, like the innermost journey, if I were to quote uh, Joseph Campbell's uh, The Hero's Journey here. But uh, Victor has a very appealing backstory. He wasn't always this, this crazy guy and really kind of digging into that and communicating that to our audience. We think, we think will be pretty neat, uh, first year and the years to come. Yeah. Especially with Instagram and TikTok and all this crap, there's a lot of channels to play that story, which is kind of cool. Yeah. It's yeah. very, that's a cool idea. Yep. I'm excited. So what are your... <laughs> I'm going to say, what, what's your middle of the road expectations for 2022? Middle of the road? Like, expectation in what way? Like, like not go bankrupt? That's probably what yeah. well, That's probably <laughs> the middle of the road. Pay, All right. pay our investors back? That's probably too. <laughs> yeah. We'll make this easier. So, what would you consider a touchdown in 2022? Um, 30 to 40,000 people over 15 nights, 15 okay. days. And, and I think we're going to very easily do it. My, my concern is more that we're not going to have enough space for people, that people are going to want to try to come in and we're only going to be able to put 2000 people a night for, right. you know, in five hours, which is very doable yeah. in our haunt yeah. and spacing people. You know, that's the one thing too. We also want us to build an experience this year. We will we do not want a Congo line in our haunted house. That's one thing that we're very adamant on. You go to these other places, you're literally, you can see the line in front of you all the way up. You know, we're, we plan on spacing people every 45 seconds apart okay. in groups, which we feel mm -hmm. is, and especially the way that Jared designed this thing, it's, it's crazy. Like it, if someone walks 45 seconds ahead of you, you might not see him till the end. Yeah. 
So I think that's something that, uh, you know, we're going to be big with this year. We want that experience. We want people going, you know, you got to go to that. Or, and then also the other events throughout the year selling itself out. Like as soon as we put out that hollow, the Valentine's event, know that there's only, you know, 3,500 to 4,000 tickets for two nights. They're going to sell out. That's what that's our, that would be the touchdown for us is if we could sell out that Valentine's day event in a, in a weekend when we drop the content. No, build for the future. I like it. Yep. Yep. It's not the money grab. The money grab is not what this is about. It's about making a sustainable business that we can grow. And, you know, Jared and I have talked not only obviously comics and, you know, the merch and stuff that we're going to create and build upon this brand on, but also, you know, as a real estate developer, I joke with them. I'm like, we're going to be buying like old hospitals and stuff, <laughs> you know, like, and just turning them into haunted houses, right? Like, that's what I'm excited for. I'm excited for what the next location is going to be. What yeah. what story, what crazy psychopath stuff Jared's going to come up with that I'm going to eat up and love. Like that's, that's what's next for us. Right. So we want to build an enterprise here. We don't want to build like a one trick pony. That's just one and done. Like we see us building haunts around the nation. someday. like 13th floor, how they yeah. have different. Yeah. Oh, it's, yep. Hey, it's a great plan. Yeah. And that'll, that'll come down the road. Um, Brian scares me with just just a little bit about that. I want to I want to get the first the first the first one up and going, run, run, run a well, build 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 a strong team behind us. But uh, when we do get to that point, um, each individual location will have its own story. But the characters between each location will have a tie, uh, kind of like American Horror Story in a way, where each each season um, they connect with one another. You do have some overlap characters. So that, that is something that we will most likely be considering down the road. Um, maybe it's a relative of, of Victor Kane that is the new main character in the next location, but uh, it's still, still the early days. We're just, just doing some high level brainstorming here. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. I, I like, I love planning. That's what I do. <laughs> so I like to hear what you guys are planning on doing, yeah. but uh, right now I'm out of questions. So I'm going to give you guys, you got any questions? No. I'm, I'm gonna... just very excited and can't wait to go. Oh, <laughs> so you got her excited, so that's good. Good. Um, I'm going to give you guys the floor to talk about your social medias, anything you guys want to talk about, anything yeah. I didn't well, catch or cover, feel yeah. free. So one of the uh, one of the exciting things, and I, I put the uh, link, Jared, in here for you so you can, you can put it in the show notes. Um, one of the things that we're doing uh, that I think is unique uh, is we have a behind the scenes documentary and series that we're making about this, about, you know, two idiots that decide to build a haunted house six months before it opens. <laughs> but, uh, but in reality, it's, it's really cool. It's cool to see like us assembling the panels, us, uh, you're going to be seeing us doing actor auditions, a uh, night of events, right? Very behind the scenes. We have a whole film crew that's following us throughout everything we're doing. Um, that's called built to scare. Uh, working title, but I think it's sticking and we're liking it, but that's on Instagram built underscore two underscore scare. Um, so you'll see a lot of the behind the scenes content of us assembling and J mostly Jared freaking out that we don't have enough time to pull this off, but that's coming together. <laughs> and then, um, and getting then on a the, better. getting, getting a little better after this, after we had a bunch of people get, out, yeah. get, get us through this past week and we're, we're in good shape. Um, but then us, obviously Lincoln Mill haunt uh, on Instagram is the best place to follow us now. Obviously we also have a TikTok that is behind, but it is coming. We're trying to get a piece of content that just makes us have a hundred thousand followers, but that'll come in time. And then, um, obviously Facebook too, that's probably the best spot, uh, up to data on weather and events during nights of, if there's anything we need to tell people, uh, to be aware of. Um, but you know, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok are our main choices for this year to, to market to people. Yep. They're good markets. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else should we, what else should we tell people? What else is like, have other people like, do we want to give any warnings, but like, people no, I, I don't want any like, info. <laughs> we're, I'm I, a I mean, I, I, I'm more worried that like, you know, especially after us putting this kid through there on Friday with no scare actors and like, I'm worried people aren't going to make it through it. Like there's areas that you turn the corner here and people might turn around. But, and I, I, that's, that's what scares me a little bit from a first time haunt. Like yeah. we're going to have people that like, we, have, unfortunately we have a ton of exits. We, we over exceed our exit you know, requirements, but like, it's more like the training, the staff to deal with that. Like it is a scary haunt and it's going to be scary. So that's my fear. But <laughs> I'm I, worried I, mean, about I, I understand why you're afraid, but you got to understand the lure that that brings. 
Yeah. Because if people start hearing like mm-hmm. my my aunt couldn't even make it through, they're going with their family next week. That's yeah, what's going to exactly. bring them in. I, I yeah. watch people get evacuated out of haunts all year. <laughs> 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 yep. I mean, yeah, so- there's, there's a field of screams. I'll sit outside a Frightmare Asylum, and the first yeah. exit, I'm watching whole families leave. Like, yeah. come on, guys, it wasn't even that bad. <laughs> yeah, like, nope. <laughs> but I mean, like, I yep. see where you're coming from. You don't, you want them to get the full experience, but yeah. them bouncing will bring you 15 to 20 more people. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But I appreciate that that advice. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it adds to the lore, and a lot yeah. of haunts will count how many people. They've been able to yellow out, which mm-hmm. means, you know, you need a diaper. And then there's a brown yep. out, too. So, and it has yeah, happened on multiple occasions. That's uh, yeah. that's Jer- that's Jared's job, night of, he said. He's taking care of all that. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I mean, even, I, I don't know the name of the company, but they make the scare badges for the actors. You know, little awards mm-hmm. you give everyone. There's a yellow mm-hmm. one, and there's a brown one. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> But like I said, like the scarier the better because it creates that lore. Like yep. the scariest haunt I've ever seen was this one. You're gonna get a hundred people just from that comment. Yep. And that's how you'll continue building throughout the years. Like, yeah, yep. you guys are opening late, but it's understandable. But mm-hmm. if you build that for next year and you say, All right, cool, we're going September twenty fifth this year, you're gonna have a full house opening weekend. Yep. So Yeah, that's for that's me, that's I mean, what we're that would be great. The scarier, the better, because not only does it drive people, it drives the the myth. Mm-hmm. That is true. Yes. Jerry, what didn't we tell them that they should know? Um, at some point, I like to show them the virtual model and just the just the detail and kind of thought into everything. Uh, with being, can you, an can you flash it? Can you flash it on your screen? Um, just, I know you, it's on your iPad. Just flash. Yeah. <laughs> just flash, like, just show them a 3D <laughs> thing. I think I can give you a little, a little flash here. Yeah, talk as you're doing it or the camera's not going to pick you up. Yeah, I'm a little... So, there you go. There you go. Kind of, kind of like the two hands in front of me, but uh, no, as a... Uh, as, as a licensed architect, pretty much we're, we're trained that everything has to have meaning. Um, everything has to tell a story from the paint schemes, from the progression through, through the spaces. As you mentioned earlier, there's no this room, then the next room. It's, it, it, it's a flowing scene. We're dropping you down in the basement. Then you get to discover where the uh, foundation, the wall opened up and led you into the chamber. You get to go into the chamber, get deeper in there. Um, so every, everything has a strong story. Everything has meaning. Uh, there, will not, there will never be anything that's just placed in there. Uh, there's still some things that we're still trying to trying to tune, make sure that fits the story. But uh, everything we do is tied back to the story and has to have meaning to that. Yeah. yeah. You guys are at a hell of an advantage with you being an architect, too, because it's going to be easier easier for you to figure out how that one actor can hit four different rooms. You know what I mean? Like yeah, right. a lot of times right. I see places struggle with that to start. And then yeah. you have to add more actors, which is more payroll. When I've seen a couple of buildings where that one actor can hit you on four turns. Uh-huh. And yeah. that actually came close to getting me because I wasn't expecting the fourth guy who was the same dude, but I wasn't expecting where he was. So yeah. I think you guys have a hell of an advantage with a, an architecture background. So that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. That is yeah. awesome. Yeah. And I think, uh, for our actors and actresses, it's, you know, we have a break room with air conditioning, a toilet that flushes, right? Like <laughs> we have, we, we've just been hearing things and we know that there's advantages on that front taking care of your team. Um, so I'm excited for that lockers, bottles of water in the fridge, you know, for your breaks, right. Doing things properly. Um, like yeah, a business, yeah. like we're a business, right? <laughs> so we have to treat our employees like a business. So that's, that's also what we're doing that's good because yeah. you you'll hear some horror stories around that i'm sure you heard from people i mean we're hearing worked. it from people interviewing we're like what what what'd you like about your last song like didn't have running water you had the shit in the woods like this is stuff that's coming out of people's <laughs> mouths I'm like uh-huh. like that's i don't want to work there <laughs> you know it's fun like you know uh, give me a yeah, porta potty at least i'll rug it there but like, come on 
Yeah, we told. I remember one of them. We told them we have, yeah we have we have brand new restrooms that are are just finishing up right now, and their their jaw just dropped. We're like, you didn't have new re- you, don't have <laughs> you, you don't have a place to go to the yeah. bathroom. <laughs> so it's, the little it's things. The, it's the little things. Little exactly. things. Yeah. So I'm gonna have you say your hours of operation again, just so everyone's clear again. Sure. Um, so hours of operation were opening night is October 6th. Okay. It's a Thursday first. Uh, uh, so that Thursday in October, and then it runs Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, every weekend in October and into the first weekend in November. So I think, uh, Halloween falls on a Monday this year, Yep. Yes. Monday or Tuesday. So it's that following weekend after Halloween is our, is our last uh, weekend. Um, so people will start getting in line, uh, at around, uh, 630 to 645. And we'll be letting people in the door shortly thereafter. Um, and then last group is allowed in at 1145. So you get there between 11, 1145 for that last time ticket slot. Um, and then on Saturdays, we're doing a non, not as scary event. It's, it's hard to say it's a family thing because kids are still going to be scared, potentially, but it's, it's a not as scary event from 12 to 4. We're going to have makeup artists uh, doing, you know, airbrushing makeup out, in the, out outside for people. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we'll have some actors out there taking uh, taking pictures. Uh, we're bringing in some more food trucks for that time, but we'll also be allowing people to walk through, lights off, music on, scent machines on, fog machines on, but you're not going to worry that someone's going to come around the corner and, and get you a brown badge or a yellow yeah. badge. <laughs> just, just to add to that, Brian, so we are going to have a little scavenger hunt inside oh, yes. for the Great. individuals going through. Yep. And we think we think that this is pretty pretty new and unique, so we're not we're not going to dig into it too much here. But uh, there's pretty much going to be a series of of totems inside that you'll have to find and scan with your with your device. And when you can find them, you pretty much uh, summon a spirit, which is one of the characters in our story. And then if you go through and find all of the spirits, all the characters, um, you enter to win into a raffle. So we're, we're trying to make the daytime experience, like we're obviously tailing to a different audience. Uh, we yeah. think there's a lot of people that, that do want to see the haunt, but not get scared. Um, so that's kind of a, a little piece that, that we're, we're working out, the whole scavenger hunt piece that we think will draw more, more people out. Um, so yeah, we're, we're excited to, to, to kick that off as well on Saturdays during the day. And to smoke out the Schuylkill River. <laughs> i'm concerned <laughs> i'm concerned it's with, getting uh, smoke we're smoking it out it's absolutely i'm concerned bad. about uh 476 the highway it's, it's across 676 there. it's 676 way up 676 how far I'm is it from about, you 676 it's, it's probably what would you say a quarter mile up and behind us jared Depend, de- yeah, it yeah. So, I mean, de- depends which way the wind's exactly. going. Exactly. If it's if it's, <laughs> if it's if it's if it's if it's a nice nice calm night, I mean, I think it'll still stick and could could spread over there. But uh, definitely something where you got to keep keep an eye on. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, uh, we're, we're well, the cops have- will let you know really quick. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I'm looking here. It looks like it's about. Yeah, I'm just looking on Google. It looks like it's uh, 1,200 feet away from across the river. Yeah, but it's up know, a ways we'll too, so I think it's you'll up, be all right. It's up. I think you'll be all right. Yeah, yeah you, you asked about that. What's that touchdown for us too? I want a uh, chopper ten above us with all the flashing lights, looking at the smoke on the Schuylkill. Like that's the touchdown. If that happens, that would be amazing. Um, yeah, the other thing cool. I should mention too. You know, I think uh, the statistics are about 90% of haunts do something relating to charity. Um, so this year, for year one, we're donating uh, $1 for every ticket sold to Children's Hospital. Oh, good. Oh, so, nice. Um, and just kind of bring it back full circle for Jared and I. Very cool. So, so I'm hoping to write him a fat check. The more tickets <laughs> sold, the fatter the check to chop. It makes some real impact. So but, we uh, need to get them 40,000 people this year. We need, we need four. I'd, I'd smile... You would see the biggest smile on my face right at a forty thousand dollar check at Children's Hospital this year. That's all awesome. we can we can pull that off. But uh, you know, thirty thousand dollar check is good too. <laughs> you know, that, uh, but you know, I you know, just setting expectations. We you know, we're expecting to sell out. I, I really believe that. Um, there's no reason we shouldn't be able to sell two thousand tickets a night for this event, nah, given the location I, and the new haunt. And I mean, we we had a post that just went freaking viral on Facebook. It's got like four hundred shares already, and 
tens of thousands of people have already seen it. Like it's crazy in one week. That's impressive. So it's it's yeah. coming. We're we're seeing it. And we ticket did, sales uh, are starting to trickle. So yeah, and there was uh, so Man- Manion holds seasonal events throughout the year. Uh, this was back in May, right? That uh, Brian, that Manion did the street food festival. Yeah, food truck festival. Mm-hmm. So I think so. This this pretty much took place right in front of the building there. I think there was between like forty, between like forty and fifty thousand people that came out for the food festival that day. Yep. Uh, so, so just to kind of feel for the audience that we have, uh, honestly, my, my concern is having, having too many people the first year and having the right, right staff and right infrastructure built up to handle everyone and still put on an awesome experience. So that's, that's one, one little thing I'm concerned about <laughs> uh, <laughs> with, with, with our location. But yeah. well, it'll work a, out. It sounds to me like you guys are on the right track because you have one concerned about the art, one concerned about the business, and that's needed. Correct. Because yeah. when it's two artists together, they can get trouble. When it's yep. two business guys, you can get a lot of trouble. <laughs> but uh, nah, everything you said to me tonight sounds amazing. I can't wait to see it. I know. Appreciate I'm, that. I'm what, a... Do you know what night you're coming out yet? No. <laughs> right. I'm thinking well, you... it, there's a possibility... It could be the 29th. Okay. But it could also be the 28th because we're in Philly both those nights. Okay. So I'll, I'll let you know when we share that up. But I. Yeah, that would be amazing. It's, you know, we have prior commitments, stuff like that, stuff we always have to get to. And then, um, you know, I'd like to do Philly in a night, but. I kind of want to give you guys more time, so we're going to work yeah. on that. <laughs> and with you guys being open on Thursdays, is actually kind of cool. Yeah. Because it gives people that work the weekends a chance to do it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I travel for work all over the country, but if mm-hmm. I'm here on Thursday, I'll come on Thursday. Yep. Cool. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll keep yeah. in touch with you on that one. Fantastic. Sounds good. So anything else you guys want to quote? I mean, you don't have to give anything. I don't give anything away on this podcast or website, so it's up to you. I'm just uh, I'm excited for the people we're going to be hiring. Here. That's all I got to say. We're assembling a squad. That's good. Building a rock star team. That's how I build all my businesses, and that's what I told Jared from day one. I said, Jared, we're building a rock star team, period, end of story. I don't care what it costs. I don't care what we have to do to get them. That's what we're doing, and I think that's going to be evident in the people – when they walk through our haunt, they're going to see that they're going to see actors that are engaged all five hours because they're not tired from seven straight nights, right? Like this is, this is a production and we're treating it as such. You will go to Broadway. You expect it to be perfect. That's how we're treating this. That's a good plan because Mm -hmm. actors will make or break your haunt. Correct. (laughs) I mean, you could buy as many animatronics as you want, but it's not going to give the scare nearly as close to an actor. Mm -hmm. So they're the tools of the trade and, the the places that you constantly hear about, the actors are happy. Some of yep. the places that fade, people have left. So mm-hmm. I mean, you guys are on the right trail. You want to wrap? Great. This up? I'm, thank you guys so much for coming thank on. Thank you. I appreciate you reaching out. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to tell uh, tell the story of what we're working on over here in Manioc. No problem. I heard brand new haunt. I was like, oh, I got to check these guys out. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try and get this up for Friday. So it gives you guys that. more time and everything. Yep. And th- that was my plan the whole time, was try to get you guys on as soon as I could. So we yep. can just post it. You guys can run whatever you guys want to run with it. And then it's just there for yep. you guys. We're here for you guys. That's what we do. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. You got it. But yep. uh, yeah, I'll check out this chat after we end this. And I'll yep. shoot you some messages. and We'll be good to go. Sounds good. Sounds right. good. It's nice, nice talking nice, to the two of you. Nice to meet you. You too. You too. Thanks Have a good out. night. Yep. See ya. Thanks. You too. Bye. And that was a fun interview. That was a fun interview. I am so excited. I know. Me too. <laughs> well, that was. Uh, they're calling it the Lincoln Mill Haunt now. So that was an interview with the owner team of the Lincoln Mill Haunt. It'll be a good time. Um, I will have all their info in the show notes after this or in the comments or whatever the hell you want to call it. Doesn't matter. This has been Halloween Haunts, 365.com, the podcast where every day is haunt season. Goodbye. Bye.